to start with the veterans. The president of your organization here, Jack Santone. Paul Farina, both from the Army. Harold Bowling Sr., Army. Joe Nuno, Navy. Pat Mahoney, National Guard. Frank Forlenza, Army. Frank Yozo, Air Force. Eli Petrano, Army. Robert Eichhorn, Air Force. <laughs> Tiny Milano, Army. Nino Gabriel, Army. Al Cerulli, Navy. Philip Sana, Army. Andrew Tuckro, Navy. Tom Durkin, Marines. And by my list, last but certainly not least, Marge Tonelli, Navy. Robert Reed, Army. Okay. You all set? There you go, Robert. Link. One more. Oh, no. We have, no, we have other veterans. Jimmy's one of the. Jimmy, no, those are veterans that are commanders of posts. They're back there. I'm going to announce them different. Okay? They're, they're just members. They're members of posts. Veteran, he's the commander of 60. I'll, I got it. Come on, guys. Okay. The Lincoln High School Junior Marine Corps, ROTC, post colors. Will everyone please rise? <laughs> Will everyone join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please remain standing. I'd like a moment of silence this past week. Uh, 
Nunzio Frenji, a member here and a veteran, had just passed away. So we'll have a moment of silence for Nunzio. Thank you. Will everyone please be seated? Post colors. Your, your president, Jack Santonzi, is going to say a few words. First of all, I'd like uh, to thank everyone for showing up here. Nice crowd today. But what's disappointing is every year the, the number of veterans diminish here. And that really hurts me. You know? Oh, I'm sorry. I said, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming. Because without you, I mean, we, we wouldn't have this affair, particularly the mayor. And uh, I said, every year it looks like there's less veterans up here. And it's kind of disappointing, you know, to think that uh, people like we're a disappearing race, you know. So I love all these guys. Thank you all for serving. And thank you all for coming. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. I'm going to read some numbers. World War II. Over 16 million Americans who served in World War II. More than 400,000 died during the war. Prisons of war, 124,079. Missing in action, 30,314. Today, there are more than 73,000 Americans remain unaccounted for from World War II. Korean War, prisoners of war, 7,140. Missing in action, 8,177. Today, there are more than 7,500 Americans still accounted for from the Korean War. The Vietnam War, Vietnam, 1,555, Laos, 445, Cambodia, 75, Territorial Waters, China, 8. That total is 2,083, unaccounted for. The Cold War, MIAs, 343. Today, 126 service members remain unaccounted for. The Iraq Theater, Personnel missing, the total right now is seven. These numbers are from the, the De Defense Prisoner of War Missing Personnel Office. T the total, 252,769. Prisoners of War, 131,219. MIAs, 38,834. More than 82,219 are still unaccounted for. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the table at my side. We ask that you remain seated yet silent as we conduct the POW MIA ceremony. This ceremony is rich with military tradition as we honor those men and women of our armed forces who, in defense of our freedoms of our country and that of the free world, are unaccounted for and are classified as prisoners of war or missing in action. At all military functions where meals are served, these heroes are always honored and remembered. The table is set for our prisoners of war and those missing in action from all wars. They are not with us today. The table is round to show that our concern for them is never ending. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms so that their children could remain free. Let us remember the United States Army, the United States Navy, the United States Marine Corps, the United States Coast Guard, the United States Air Force. Let us remember the men and women, prisoners of war from all branches of service that are all too often forgotten. Let us remember them. The lone candle symbolizes the frailty of a prisoner alone trying to stand up against his oppressors. The single red rose reminds us of the loved ones and families of our comrades in arms who keep the faith and await their return.
The ribbon on a rose represents the love of our country, which inspired them to answer the nation's call. The black napkin stands for the emptiness these warriors have left in the hearts of their family and friends. A slice of lemon is on a bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate if we do not bring them home. The salt on the plate, symbolic of the family's tears as they wait and remember. The glass is a reminder, reminding us of their distinguished comrades cannot be with us to drink a toast or join in the festivities today, maybe tomorrow if we remember. And the glass is inverted. The faded picture on the table is a reminder that they are missed very much and are remembered by their families. The POW MIA flag is posted to mourn the fact that many of our comrades will not return to our shores and pay tribute to their passing. As we look upon this empty table, do not remember ghosts from the past, but remember our comrades. For the empty tilted chair picks the, unface, the unknown face representing no specific soldier, sailor, airman, marine, or coast guardsman, but all are here with us today. Remember those who we depended on in battle. They depend on us to bring them home. Remember our friends. They are the ones we love, who love life and freedom as we do. They will remember what we do. Please honor and remember them. Will everyone please rise? Salute. <laughs> Be seated, please. Okay, with us today, uh, first I want to thank, uh, I want to do thank yous, and if I miss somebody, let me know. Let's start with the Marine Corps ROTC, with, with uh, the Junior Lincoln High School Marine Corps and their principal, Mr. Sherman. Could you please stand, Mr. Sherman? By the way, if anyone knows a Marine that is capable of teaching, they need one. Uh, the, the person, the instructor left, and the, this man is trying his damnedest to keep the program going. 
So we don't want that program to leave us. So if anyone knows, get in touch with, I assume, either the mayor or Lou Navarro or Lincoln High School principal. They're looking for someone that has to be, should have been in the Marines, I assume. Of course, the Marine Corps is going to be paying for it. Thank you, Mr. Sherman. And he was kind enough to get them all over here for us today because the instructor left last week. Okay? Uh, Ed and Mike Bennett, Ed Whitman, Mike Bennett, Ed takes pictures, gets them in the Yonkers Rising, and they're there every year for us. We have with us our Parks Commissioner. He ran out. He's over there. Your Parks Commissioner, your boss will replace Commissioner Ann, Anthony Landy. Okay, let's see. Let's, I wrote these things all over the place here. And we have, let's get to some of the veterans. James McGovern from 1666 City Post. <laughs> Joey Caselli and Nick Gunja from 375. Joey's the, the commander of 375, the Empire Post. Okay. From Elliot Engels' office, Congressman Elliot Engels, Jay Wedgman. <laughs> we have our uh, State Assemblywoman, Shelly Mayer. I think I got everyone. Mr. Mayor, your turn to come up and speak. Mayor Mike Spano. Oh, Mike Sabatino, 3rd District. I wrote him here, too. Mike Sabatino, Councilman, 3rd District. You know, you will always see him at every function. You will see him there, and you'll also see Shelly. And Shelly, you're going to see that. Thanks, Sam. Round of applause for Sam. Does a great job for us all the time. Uh, Principal Sherman, it's good to see the ROTC here, good to see you all. Thank you, continue to make us proud here in Yonkers and our, especially uh, over at, Rose, at uh, Lincoln High School. Um, you know, I'll tell you a name, uh, Joseph Damiento. Joseph Damiento was my great aunt Lena's son, my father's first cousin. Joseph Damiento uh, was an Air Force pilot. Matter of fact, before he went into service in World War II, uh, he graduated Manhattan College. First generation Italian American, graduated uh, Manhattan College, was an engineer. The first Spano to get uh, a college degree uh, here in America. And he served our country, did uh, several runs over Germany and was shot down was MIA. Uh, several years later, his remains were returned uh, here. And the reason I tell the story is because my father told me the story. I didn't know Cousin Joseph Damiento, or he called him Cousin Joey. But it was important enough, his contributions were great enough, that my father told me, and he's like, you need to remember this, and you need to tell your children about this. Because you need to know that here was a young man with a great future who gave his life so that this can continue to be the greatest country in the history of the world. And that's what we're here today. We know that many of, of these individuals didn't come back. And that's what we're here about, to talk about, those who did not come back. But they were somebody. And they had a family. And they had loved ones. And they may have had children. But they're people who had an impact on other people's lives. And we need to always remember who they are. And we should always go and go that extra step. Tell your family about them. So that from generation to generation, their contributions are never forgotten here in America and here in our home. So um, I'm here today as mayor of Yonkers to tell you that um, we will continue to recognize uh, the, uh, the POW MIAs. Uh, we are working with uh, Councilman Sabatino, one of the first things we did was uh, require that every flagpole in Yonkers carry that flag along with the American flag. Every single one, including our schools. And I remember, Michael, if you can tell the story, that when we did it, somebody said, well, you know, it's an expensive proposition. And I said, well, how expensive is it? He said, $3,000. I said, we can't provide $3,000 for our veterans and we were able to get private funding to support it. We continue this, and we'll always continue this, because we should, and it's right. It's the right thing to do. So remember our veterans, those who are not with us, and it should always know that they'll never be forgotten. Also remember our veterans who are here with us. 
we should always say thank you. Because without them, the world that we live in today, you know, you might think it's a little funny at times. You got to enjoy this election, right? I was up to 4 o'clock in the morning. It can be a little crazy at times. But this is, this republic is truly the greatest republic in the history of the world. Uh, the greatest democracy we've ever seen 240 years. And why? Because of them. And let's uh, never forget that. It's good to see you all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, one other fellow, Lou Navarro, who is the uh, commissioner, of the head of the Veteran Service Agency. So if any of you have any questions about your spouse or as a veteran, his office and Eli, who works in there, you can just go down there anytime and they'll be more than glad to answer the questions for you. At this time, Shelly Mayer, our state assemblywoman. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Sam. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, uh, I want to follow up on something the mayor said. If there was ever a day to recognize how incredibly fortunate we are to live in this beautiful democracy and to acknowledge our veterans for preserving our right to transition our government in a peaceful way, today is that day. We have a beautiful, extraordinary democracy that these gentlemen and lady fought for and others died for and others are missing for. And if there was ever a day that we remember how incredibly fortunate we are, this is that day. So I want to thank them very much for their service, all of you. All of you, those that are not here, we remember them. And as the mayor said, we will continue to remember them. They are part of that great group that gave and sacrificed, and someone is waiting home to know the details of what happened to them. So this is the day really to thank our veterans and to acknowledge what an enormous contribution they have made. And we're deeply indebted to them. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mike, would you like to say a few words? Mike Sabatino. Thank you, Sam. Um, as my colleague said, you know, this country wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't for the men and women who fought for our country to keep it free. And like the mayor, I also have a story. Um, up until about 20 years ago, I was told that my uncle was missing in action. Um, I don't know why, sometimes families don't like to talk about things, and, um, but it came to my attention that my uncle was not missing in action. He was actually, his name was Ludwig Sabatino, and he was actually killed in the Battle of St. Lo, um, several days or weeks after Normandy. And he is buried in Normandy. And about 10 years ago, one of his army buddies sent a picture of his grave to uh, one of my family members, which I now have. So that's on my bucket list to go over and visit my uncle's grave. Um, and he was married a week and shipped over. So, um, you know, he wasn't the only one that had stories like that. But we have to be very grateful and thankful to the men and women who fought to keep us free. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, I'd like to thank Nina and the seniors here and all of you that, that help and ask me to do this. It's, it's a it's a great program, remembering. Remembering, that's what it's about. I was at a dinner and this fella, Tex, said, the policemen and the firemen keep us safe, but the veterans keep us free. That being said, God bless you all. God bless America. God bless our new commander in chief and I hope everything goes well. <laughs>